Hey guys, what's going on? So today we're gonna to be taking a look at the Blue Eddy EB3A. This is a 600 watt or 268 watt hour power station. This is a typical day for me out here in the field. And I use power stations like this a lot because I fly drones and you gotta have batteries. So something like this is invaluable out here in the field. Full disclosure, Blue Eddy did send this unit out for review. However, I'm allowed to review it in my own words in any way that I want. So with that being said, let's get into it. Here's a basic rundown. You're getting two 120 volt AC output ports and they are pure sine wave. Two USB-A ports, five volt DC, three amp output. You're also getting one USB-C port that can output 100 watts. Over here, we have the input for charging and it's literally a 120 volt AC, the nine amp max. There is no AC adapter. You just plug in one of these three prong wires and that's it. There's a 12 volt DC output port right here and there's two 12 volt DC 10 amp ports there as well. So we've got an MPPT port. I have to admit, I don't do any solar charging. 15 watt wireless charging up on here and we've got a little light. So that pretty much wraps up the basics. I'll start to demonstrate those functions. I've turned on the two 120 volt pure sine wave AC output ports and I'm gonna plug in a battery for my Mavic Air 2. In my testing at home, one of these Mavic Air 2 batteries uses about 20% of the battery life of the EB3A. Keep in mind, these are 3,500 milliamp hour packs or 40.42 watt hours. So there's a lot that goes into each one of these Mavic Air 2 batteries. If you're charging a single Mavic Air 2 battery at its peak, you're gonna use about max 60 watts of power. And it's gonna take the exact same amount of time for you to charge it at home, because again, these are just 120 volt AC out for us. They're no different than you're charging at home. Now, besides my DJI Mavic, I also really enjoy flying little FPV drones like this. And there's two ways that I can use my hobby grade chargers like these with this unit. One of my chargers only does DC input, but because it has a DC output jack, all I have to do is plug in a DC out cable, press that button, and then boom, I've got DC output power to this little hobby grade charger. And I've still got my AC going for my Mavic Air 2 battery. I'm ready to start charging. Now I've got one of these 1500 milliamp hour 4S batteries that's 16.4 volts. They go with this guy. I can charge two of these using this with a dual output charger. And that'll take about 20% of the battery as well from this. So I've got a charge cycle going on this now and my Mavic Air 2 battery. And again, we've got plenty of output power here. We're only using 75 watts between the two of these chargers. When I'm out here in the field, I'll connect the charger like this. And I could do that with the AC power because I got two ports here. I've got a parallel charge board. It allows me to charge multiple batteries at the same time. I've got all these little four cell batteries. I can plug in and get them all going. And we're up to 171 watts of power. Again, plenty of room. Now, another thing that I like to do during the summer is I'll bring a fan like this. This unit is perfectly, perfectly capable of running this fan along with all this other stuff. Uh, you could absolutely plug in a power strip to either of these ports to get a lot more out of it. But you've got plenty of headroom to do a lot of things all at the same time. With the USB-C output here, and I can be out here charging and using my laptop here in the field. Yeah, I know the laptop has a battery already built in it, but if you're gonna be doing something long-term or you don't want your computer to throttle back because it doesn't have a power source like some laptops do, then this is a wonderful solution. I mean, I could just keep connecting more and more of the typical stuff that I use every day to fly, or charge this controller, and this thing is going to above and beyond perform for me. I really, really like the charge situation. So first, it's nice that the entire charging for the unit is built in. We just got a three prong connector. But really the best thing for me is that this unit can reach 80% charge capacity within 30 minutes. And then by an hour, it's pretty much just fully charged. Now I don't like to leave units like this charged for a long time. So if I'm gonna use it, I'm pretty much gonna make that decision to use it the same day so the fact that I can get to 80% in a half an hour and pretty much be fully charged in an hour is really, really good. If you want to enable turbo charge times with the Blue Eddy, you need to download the app from the App Store or the Google Play Store and connect to your EB3A. It does this over Bluetooth. You'll see it come up on your device and you should be able to connect to it. 
In the app, we can do a few basic things. We can actually turn on and off the AC and DC ports, and you can get a breakdown of what each port is using, whereas here you can kind of only see the total. It's just a very quick overview, but here are the settings. This is what's really most important. Okay, so for the charging modes, we have three different options. We have standard, silent, and turbo charge. Now, by default, it's on standard. If you want those really fast charge rates, you're going to have to choose turbo. And there is a warning, but yeah, it says for the best battery lifespan, please turn this mod mode on only when urgent power is needed. Okay, you're going to click OK, and then we should be getting a pretty fast charge rate now. There you go. So we're actually charging at 430 watts, which is crazy fast. And this will basically be at 80% in just about a half an hour. And then from there on, it will taper off to be a max of about 250 watts once it hits that 80% and then finish it out. So here's a quick rundown of the different charge modes. In the silent mode, the fan does not run at all and you get a maximum input of about 100 watts and it takes about two and a half hours to get to a full charge. This is the slowest mode. And so here's the standard mode. It's going to charge the unit at 268 watts of AC input. And it's going to take about an hour and a half to two hours to be fully charged. And here's what the, uh, here's what the fan sounds like. The sound will come and go as the Bluetti cools itself while charging in the standard mode. In the turbo mode, or 430 watt charge over AC, the fan will be constantly running like this. Now this is a mode that the fan is not going to shut off. It's going to run like this through the entire charge cycle during turbo mode. Whereas in the standard mode, it might just go on and off and the fan will pull back a little bit on its RPM. But this is pretty much you, what you can expect to hear for the entire time you're charging in turbo mode. The Bluetti EB3A supports charging from your car using a 12 volt or a 24 volt socket. If you're 12 volt like I am, then you'll get about 100 watts of charge input. If you are 24 volt, then you're gonna get 200 watts of charge input. Now the important thing to note is that you do not get this cable included with your EV3A. You need to buy it separately if you intend to charge from your car. You do get a solar cable, however, but you don't get a car charge cable. Another setting that's important to note about the EV3A, and that is the power lifting option. The power lifting option allows it to spike the load a little bit. Again, though, this is still for purely resistive loads and it's 1,200 watt max. So it does give it a little bit of a spike. Like let's say you have a space maker or a coffee maker or something like that, and you're using it with this. It'll allow it to kind of burst there if you need that. That's a quick look at the Blue Eddy app. It is completely free, gives you a lot of status options, and it helps you manage the unit and change a few of those settings. We're gonna go over some of the little appliances that I think would be useful to you with this Blue Eddy. So the first one I wanna talk about is this Cuisinart uh, pod maker. It is a coffee and tea pod maker. You've got little pods you put in there. All right, this Cuisinart coffee and pod maker uses just under 425 watts and it can sometimes burst up to around 600 depending on its power usage. And if you're going to be do doing light appliances like these, you want it to be able to sustain a spike and not shut off. And that's what the power lifting feature is for. You want to turn that on to be able to, to, be able to use things like this coffee maker or say this space heater, which we'll demonstrate as soon as we're done with this cup of coffee. And we're at 95% right now making this cup. I don't know if you can see, but there's some steam that's coming off of there. It's coming out pretty decently hot. That is it. We have our hot cup of water there. You would put a pod, I didn't use a pod, but, and it took about 15% of the battery life to make one cup. So you can make quite a few cups of tea out of this thing. And obviously your Keurig is a total no. Don't even try or don't even bother with it. Small stuff, under 600 watts. And for the next appliance, I'm gonna show off this 500 watt space heater. I bought it on Amazon. It was about $15. 
and you do need to enable that turbo power mode in the app to even get this thing to work. As you can see, it's got the ability to power this little Andaly space heater, and we are using about, again, 430 watts of power to do it, with it bursting anywhere between 500 to 550 is what I'm finding with this. And it has a protective cutoff feature for safety. So you want to use that on a hard surface if you're going to use it with your Blue Eddy, but it'll sustain the load the entire time. All right, so this little 500 watt space heater puts out a decent amount of heat for what it is. Uh, if you need to just warm your hands up or warm your person just a little bit, it'll do that for you. The downside is you guys can see the amount of time we have remaining. It's only gonna get about a half an hour according to this. 0.5 hours is left running this constantly at 450 watts. But if you wanna get a quick burst of heat on or off, there's a little button there. You just warm up real quick, turn it off and go back to doing what you were doing. So although you can run some low wattage specific appliances like this, and I'll have the links and names to these down in the video description below if you wanna check them out. Uh, Blue Eddy does warn that with the power lifting mode on, you do not want to try to run full refrigerators, full size things, just not gonna work and you could damage your unit. So just don't do that. The Blue Eddy EB3A has a light as well. And I'm gonna demonstrate to you what you can expect to get out of it. Now this is the lowest level that the light goes. Now I'll increase it. Now we're on the second level that the light goes. So it's a pretty direct beam of light. I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the strobe so you guys can see what that looks like as well. And that's it in strobe mode. The EB3A comes in at just 10 pounds, so I think you're getting a decent power to weight to size ratio for everything that this thing features. The only thing I wish it had was a more grippy handle. As you can see, it is just plastic, but it's nothing a little sticky tape or something like that couldn't remedy. All right, with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day. This is my review of the Blue Eddy EB3A. I want to thank Blue Eddy again for sending this out to me to do a review. If you like the video, please hit the thumbs up. Uh, if you have any questions about the unit, leave me a comment. I'm going to do some flying, and you guys take care.